You're listening to Sports Radio Detroit. Sports Radio Detroit is proud to present the Whip and Nene podcast on SportsRadioDetroit.com SRD with your show hosts Pete Spybeck, a broadcaster and horse racing handicapper, and Dana Garuder, a sports writer and horse racing handicapper. This episode welcomes guest host Aaron Hayes, who's a freelance horse racing writer and handicapper. And now here comes the Whip and Nene podcast on SportsRadioDetroit.com with Pete, Dana, and Aaron. Oh yeah, welcome in to another episode of the Whip and Nene podcast here on SportsRadioDetroit.com SRD. I am indeed one of the show hosts. I am Pete Spivak of iHeart Media Detroit. You can hear me doing traffic and sports updates in the metro Detroit area on all the iHeart Media stations as well as Sirius XM Radio. And that's what I do. I'm also a professional horse racing handicapper. With me is are my two usual co-hosts, one being the great Dana Garuder, who's a sports writer here in the metro Detroit area. Dana, how are you, buddy? Much closer to 100% this time. Attaboy. Yeah, you were a little under the weather last race. Good. You, you wheeled yourself back into uh, health. And then uh, the great Aaron Hayes, who's a uh, professional racing handicapper, is with us. And Aaron, how are you, my friend? What up, Pete? How are you doing today? Doing well, doing well, gentlemen. As we uh, make our way through, uh, it's hard to believe we have seven prep races to go as we make our way towards the uh, Kentucky, Kentucky Derby coming up in a month. And basically, yeah, a month and a half. So it's getting near the time, gentlemen, getting near the time we get to party hardy in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, what the three of us do here on the Whip and Nene podcast is we break down that road to the Kentucky Derby, the American prep race schedule, which leads to the Derby on the first Saturday in May. American, European, and Japanese horses compete for 20 gates at the Kentucky Derby by racing a 35-race prep schedule, which runs between September and April. All prep races award points on to the top four finishers, and the top 20 horses with the most points will earn a gate at the Kentucky Derby. There are spots for 18 American horses, one Japanese champ, and one European champ. And so that's how they do it now for the Derby. So let's get into what happened last week. We had two prep races last week, one being the Louisiana Derby and the other being the Sunland Derby. Dana Garuder, my good friend, what happened last week? Down in uh, the Louisiana Derby at the fairgrounds, we had a big uh, upset, uh, a 22-1 to one shot that Aaron Hayes actually liked. And he, he, he touted that horse, and uh, the horse delivered by my standards, who uh, was ridden by Gabriel Saez and uh, trained by William Brett Calhoun, who wins a lot of races down in that circuit, uh, went off, uh, just had won a mated race right before that and improved dramatically and, and won the uh, Louisiana Derby uh, in fairly convincing fashion. He won by about a length. Uh, the second horse was also oh, not quite a, a big, as big a long shot, but wasn't one of the top two favorites. That was Spinoff, who was uh, trained by Todd Pletcher. Uh, Spinoff ran a pretty solid race. He was a little bit wide around both turns, but uh, uh, ran a solid race. And I, I, I imagine this horse is also going to go to uh, the Kentucky Derby. I don't know if they'll give him another start before that. Finishing third was Swaino, who had run well out in uh, Oaklawn, the previous uh, spot. Uh, o- Swaino didn't really uh, challenge uh, in this particular, at least in the stretch, he wasn't very close. Just kind of held off the rest of the field to, to get that uh, spot, get us get some points for the Derby. And uh, the big uh, news out of that one was War of Will, who was the heavy favorite, just really never got rolling throughout the race, maybe got off to a little bit of a slow start and just didn't have anything to offer and finished well beaten, but apparently the horse came out uh, healthy and uh, they're still thinking of running him in the Derby. I believe he has enough points to get there without, uh, the, even though he finished out of the money in that race. So that was the Louisiana Derby. It was a big surprise. Uh, it was a little bit more chalky out in Sunland Park. Uh, a Todd Pletcher horse, Cutting Humor, won the race. He was up six or eight to one. So I, there must have been a lot of listeners last week because 
I like that horse. I gave him as my top choice, and he was bet down to two to one. But uh, Todd and, and uh, Hall of Fame jockey uh, John Velasquez uh, pulled off a, a very mild upset. He was the second choice. He uh, held off another twist to fate who had been running on the synthetic surface over in Golden Gate and dominating uh, on the synthetic. And another twist to fate ran a very strong race, almost caught cutting humor in the stretch. They were both stalking the pace. Uh, and and uh, Mucho Gusto, who was the favorite, kind of got burned off in a speed duel and ended up a well-beaten third. And that Mucho Gusto, the favorite, was uh, trained by Bob Baffert. I don't know if Mucho Gusto was really good enough to make the derby, but Bob Baffert has other horses in the barn who are better, and I'm sure he will be well represented when uh, the first Saturday in May rolls around. So with that, I'll turn it back to Pete. Well, I appreciate your breakdown there, Dana. Thanks very much. And, uh, Aaron, you're the one who called by my standards in the Louisiana Derby. At least it was one of your long shot uh, specials. Uh, so did you have any comments on the Derby, how that went? Um, I, I did like the five horse. I had him as my third pick. Uh, obviously, we all believed that War of Will was going to win. But uh, uh, speaking of War of Will, I was kind of – I knew about his third step out of the gate that something was wrong. He, he normally breaks fast, and he normally has uh, puts himself in a in a nice position. That as one of the, uh, his strengths as a horse is getting in, into good race position. But uh, his third step out of the gate, his third jump, it just didn't look right. Just didn't seem right. Like his hind legs or something happened, and um, he just didn't just didn't run well from there. But uh, my other two choices that I did have spin off and by my standards, they they ran uh, pretty pretty uh, swell races. Absolutely. And what do you think about the Sunland? <laughs> Ah, I was actually surprised and actually um, ec- uh, ecstatic that my horse ran second by a nose because I had no idea what a twist of fate was going to do on the um, on the dirt. Um, he actually uh, didn't do what I think he was going to do was go to the lead. He actually sat off the speed behind Mucho Gusto, which I don't know why he was gunned to the front by Joe Talamo. I thought he, I thought that he would rate in that race, but. Those two had the exact opposite of how I thought they would run, and another Twisted Fate had a, a good run down the stretch. I'm just a little upset that he came up a little short, but it was a good effort. Very good, gentlemen. Very good. I appreciate that uh, info there, Aaron. That's awesome. And real quick, uh, before we move on to the news of the week, I just want to let everybody know what the current standing is in the top 20 rundown, at least um, – over the past, uh, since the points system basically started about five seasons ago, it seems that 40 is like the cutoff each year for uh, you know horses to make the gate. So I'll at least give you the horses which are right now definitely in the Derby, and there are nine of them. That would be the, uh, the rank number one right now is By My Standards with 100 points. The two is War of Will with 60. Three, Code of Honor has 54. Four, Long Range Toddy has 53 and a half. Five, Cutting Humor with 50. Six, Heichel with 50. Seven, Tacitus with 50. Eight, Game Winner with 45. And nine, Spinoff with 40. And then the 10 horse, Omaha Beach, has 37 and a half points from that Rebel win. And that actually might be enough to get him in the Derby. So as of right now, with uh, 37 and a half points being the cutoff, that's uh, those 10 horses are in the Derby as of right now. So that's the way it stands. Uh, gentlemen, I just want to uh, bring up some news of the day. We don't have to do you know big-time comments of it, on it, but I just want to let our listeners know that the California Horse Racing Board met today uh, in anticipation of Santa Anita Park reopening uh, this weekend as they have to get ready for the Santa Anita Derby, which will come up next weekend. So they're going to open up the track and get things going again over there. Obviously, uh, for us uh, Major League Horse Racing fans, we all know the problems that have been happening over at Santa Anita since late December, since they opened up. Uh, now, the PETA legal official, Kathy Guillermo, says PETA will never support a sport which relies on animals to make money, but they are encouraged by adoption of anti lasix and the crop rules. So the new, the new whip, the new whip rules or the new crop rules, basically in a nutshell, the jockey is able to whip only so much and can be disqualified if it's determined overuse of the whip helped the horse hit the board. So jockeys alone would be held responsible for any fines to be paid or the misusing of the crop. So this rule change is still barring the approval of the Office of Administrative Law in California, so it won't be in effect right away. But Santa Anita will lower Lasix dosages from 10 cc's to 5 cc's. Uh, so that is uh, what they're trying to do over at Santa Anita uh, as they uh, open up the track this weekend. Gentlemen, any comments on that real quick? I, I do believe, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 
uh, a question that I think a lot of gamblers have that you kind of mentioned that uh, the jockey might be disqualified if he's using the whip excessively. From what I've read from Jeremy Balin, he said something to the effect that it will only be like a fine or suspension. The onus wouldn't be on the horse player because I don't see like how we would have the horse on top and the jockey uses the whip excessively and then we get punished because he gets DQ. Right. So I, th- I, th- I think that this is only going to be a fine and suspension, but it won't, they won't necessarily take the horses down because that would affect the horse players or whoever's gambling in that race. Yeah, I think that I saw that late, about 20 minutes before we went, we went on the air, so I do need to adjust that. I think that you're absolutely right about that, but I do know that there are fines and possible suspensions involved with that because now PETA's involved, and you know they're going to be looking at this with a microscope. Uh, uh, Dana, any comments? Well, uh, I'll discuss the LASIX uh, rule. Um, LASIX has been around for a long time. Now. I mean, it's been around. I remember reading about it in Andy Byer's early books, how LASIX can affect a race. And so, you know, unfortunately, uh, the horses that we've seen over the years, and most of them have used LASIX. And, you know, you can argue that the breed has suffered because of it. And, the horses aren't as durable as they used to be. It would be nice to try to reverse that trend, but I don't know if you can fully do that. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, uh, you know, how many horses bleed during a race now if, if they can't use Lasix. But I, but I, I'd like to see it tried. You know, I'd like to see races that where the horses don't get Lasix. I think it would be uh, a good, just good PR for the sport. To not have you know pretty much every horse have Lasix run, running on Lasix these days, right? Well, that's what definitely Santa Anita and Golden Gate Fields are going to try uh, doing that. But again, this is barring uh, I, I from what I read, the California Horse Racing Board needs to uh, approve it again in a month or so, and then it goes to the Office of Administrative Law uh, for their approval as well. So it's probably still a couple months away from being approved. So we'll see what happens on that. And then uh, one other piece of news, which I mentioned before we went on the air. Uh, a really uh, if, obviously it's sad when a horse dies, but it's uh, sometimes the way it dies is kind of like you know where were the film cameras when this happened? A harness horse at Miami Valley died uh, over the past weekend when he broke loose through the driver, and then proceeded to fall into the infield pond and drown. Uh, it's just obviously you don't want to see a horse die, but what the heck? The thing makes a left turn. Usually when a horse breaks free in harness racing, and we've had experience with harness racing here in the metro Detroit area with uh, Northville Downs and with uh, Hazel Park Raceway when it was a harness track and was still standing. Uh, you know, the harness horses usually break and to the outside and sort of gallop you know, around the outside fence and the pole. I, it's just, I just find it a, a sad, unfortunate, and really weird that a horse went left and went into the pond and drowned. So I don't know if you guys had any comments on that. That, that's that's unusual and weird. You're absolutely right about that. That's a weird one. So they didn't mention the horse name. They didn't mention the race, but it happened over the weekend at Miami Valley. So if you were there as a witness to that one, well, um, wow. <laughs> wow. So uh, don't, hope it didn't bring everybody down. But, yeah, just what a weird story that was. All right, gentlemen, so let's move on to our prep races then coming up this weekend. But before we do that, I would like to remind everybody to log on to SportsRadioDetroit.com, SRD, and vote in the Detroit Favorite Female Personality Bracket Challenge. This is our popular March Bracket Challenge to see who is Detroit's favorite female personality by your votes. And I expect you two to log on and vote as well. So uh, log on to SportsRadioDetroit.com, SRD, and cast your vote today in the Detroit Favorite Female Personality Bracket Challenge. How about that, gentlemen? How about that? Well, let's... Uh, How far uh, along are we, are we in, this, in this bracket challenge, by the way? You voted early? I said, how far along How far along is it now? We're in the uh, second round now. Second round. We've gone from first round to second round, and so we're down to... Uh, we went from 60... Well, we went uh, from 30... I think it was 32. So actually, we're close to the Sweet 16 now. So okay. Get on there and vote. It's pretty cool. Did you automatically win the, the favorite male uh, personality? Pardon me? Do you automatically win the favorite male personality? They, they don't have the contest for the men. No, that, that goes to a guy named Dana Garuder. Have you ever heard of him? Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard of that guy before. His name is Dana Garuder. He likes to wheel every pick, and he's, he's always right on every pick because he wheels every horse. <laughs> 
All right, gentlemen, let's get into Saturday's grade one. One mile and an eighth, one million dollar express bet Florida Derby from the great Gulfstream Park in Hollandale Beach, Florida. Race 14 on your card. Points awarded on the road to the Derby, 100 for the win and 40 for second. So that means the top two horses in this field will earn automatic bids. 20 for third and 10 for fourth. A field of 11 horses. Post time set for around 6.30 Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. And gentlemen, let's get right into the field with a the number one horse. Hidden Scroll with a brand new jockey is your lukewarm 5-2 to two morning line favorite in an 11 horse field. The great Aaron Hayes. What do you have? Well, normally I like taking favorites, and I took Hidden Scroll last time, but I just can't do it this time. The favorite has won just once in the last 10 years in the Florida Derby, so I'm going to stay away from Hidden Scroll, and I'm going to go with the nine. Code of Honor is my top pick. Uh, Code of Honor, he set off the, the speed duel, which uh, Hidden Scroll had last time. He just went way too fast, just just challenging the the slow, not slow, but the, the sprinter horse, and just burnt himself out. And Kona, out of Code of Honor closed very well with Johnny V. Um, last time out in the Fountain of Youth, he sat back um, fifth and just, just slowly closed into that very, very, very tremendous speed duel that uh, Hidden Scroll had earlier. So I'm going to go with Johnny V and Code of Honor on my top pick. He has two wins, obviously the last one being the Fountain of Youth. And, um, you know, he ran a 95 British speed rating in that last race, and he's uh, and he's been working out quite well for uh, Suge McGahey. So I'm going to go with Code of Honor as my top pick. And as my second pick is really a 2A and a 2B. These two horses are really pretty much the same to me, but they will not be the same on the tote board. And those two horses are Harvey Wallbanger and Bourbon of War. But I'm going to take Harvey Wallbanger slightly over Bourbon of War just because he's going to have a better price. But if you look at those two last races they both ran, Obviously, they didn't run in the same race, but Harvey Wallbanger, who was a, a very big upset in the Holy Bull going off at 29 to 1, he um, started real slow, started off ninth, closed from there on out. He closed into a nice little speed uh, duel with the Jose, uh, not the Jose, but the Ortiz brothers up top, and he closed to win that race. But if you look at Bourbon Wars last race in the Fountain of Youth, where he ran second to Code of Honor, my top pick, they had pretty much the identical same running line with the exception of bourbon war didn't win his last race he ran second by three quarters of the length but they both broke ninth they both closed from off the pace they both had a nice little pace uh a nice little speed duel in front of them for them to close into thing is, another reason why i'm picking harvey wallbanger slightly over bourbon war is if you look at his last uh workout he was a uh, 47th flat uh, one out of 100 horses, he had a bullet going out at Gulfstream. So he's been working out extremely well. He took some time off since February, since the, the Holy Bull. And I believe that he's going to be a very nice price. He's really done nothing wrong in his five starts. He's finished no worse than second. And that was his very um, – he didn't break his maiden until um, November 17th. And then he's uh, progressed since then, obviously winning the Holy Bull as his first time running as a three-year-old. And I think he's probably – trying to figure this out and i think he is figuring this out i think he's gaining some weight he's been training well so i'm gonna go with harvey wallbanger as my second pick and bourbon of war as my third pick it's kind of hard to get off of irad ortiz who is the uh, one of the leading jockeys out there him and uh him and luis sayas so it's it's very hard to, to to knock bourbon war he closed like i said he closed last time and ran second by uh three quarters of the length the race before then ortiz rolled him to his uh to a, a, a win at Gulfstream Park going a mile and 16th. So these two horses are extremely similar to me. I'm just going to take uh, Harvey Wallbanger over Bourbon War as my uh, second and third pick. I have to fade Hidden Scroll because um, I, I, I really don't know what to do with him. I know he's going to go to the lead, but now they want this horse to rate, which is kind of weird to me because he's going to have the inside post. So if he sends... I believe it's the same thing is going to happen. He's not Jose. I mean, Javier is not going to be able to settle him down. He's going to have a speed duel up front with um, with another with a couple of horses, probably uh, Hard Bell and Maximum Security. So they're pretty much going to just duke it out up front. And even if they do try to raid off of him, I don't I don't know if Hidden Scroll has the the whereabouts to 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 pass horses coming down the stretch. He only knows one way to go, and then by the time that he is ready to pass horses, he might be in a crowd of horses. I mean, I don't know if he wants to, 
to, to bumper coming around the turn. Who knows how he'll take that or whatnot. But at, at a short price and, and with favorites only winning once in the last 10 years, I might have to fade Hidden Scroll. So my top three picks are the Nine Horse, Code of Honor. Three, Harvey Wallbanger. I love that name. And four, Bourbon of War. And with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Dana. All right. Well, you know, I don't like playing favorites either. But you know what? I, I like I like Hidden Scroll mainly because of the Jackie change. I, I think the top two Jackies right now are Javier Castellano and I read Ortiz. Those, those, those would be my one-two in terms of Jackies. And I just have a feeling that Castellano will find a way to raid off of the two other speed horses and and get a nice trip here. And I, I you know, the horses only run twice, so I, 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 don't, I wouldn't make any strong assumptions yet that he can't rate. I, I, we'll, we'll find out in this race, but I just, what he did last race was just as impressive as what he did in his maiden race because the fractions were crazy. I mean, 22 and four, 45 and three, you know, he really had no shot. He actually ran very well to, to almost take third in that race uh, with Joel Rosario riding him. I, I think Castellano is going to give him a nice rating trip and we'll see what he can do in the stretch. Um, and the other part of this, I just don't think that the rest of the field is all that strong. I mean, you know, as you said, the you know, Code of Honor really took advantage of, of a very fast pace to win uh, the Fountain of Youth. So I'm not sure what, you know, if he doesn't get a, as, as quite as fast a pace, is, is he going to run that way again? But I'm, I'm taking uh, Bourbon War for second, mainly because Irod Ortiz is riding him. Irod has been the top jockey down in Florida all, all winter. And he just, this horse has never really run a bad race. His speed figures have been fairly consistent. You know, he's definitely a two-turn horse, and that a tap it, uh, a really good sire. I just I just think Bourbon War just probably has to be slightly better price than uh, Code of Honor. I take him for second. My third choice is one of those other speed horses, and that's Maximum Security. He's a curious horse. Jason Service, the trainer, has just been ridiculously on fire in Florida. He's won 45% of his starters. 33 out of 73 from the last stats I saw here. Um, and they they had no idea this horse was this good. They, they entered him in a $16,000 matering. Uh, usually you think, well, you're just, they must have thought he was maybe an okay sprinter by putting him in a maiden race, maiden claimer right off the bat. The horse won by nine legs, so they put him in an optional claimer at six furlongs. He won by six and a half, wrapped up, and they put him in another optional claimer. He won by almost 19 lengths. So they're giving, they're taking a shot. Or this, this horse has really surprised them. But he's he's out of New Year's Day, who's who should be able to uh, uh, make him a two-turn horse here. I'm, I'm going to take a shot that he can at least hit the board. So that's my top three choices here. Is going to be the favorite hidden uh, uh, scroll, Bourbon War for second, and Maximum Security for third. With that, Pete. I appreciate your breakdowns there, gentlemen. Thank you very much for that. And I thought I was going to get away with uh, pulling out a uh, a big race call, but I think Aaron sort of, uh, as they say in radio, stole my thunder uh, with that one. Uh, yeah, I, it's really, I think, kind of a more of an open race coming up on Saturday in the Express Bet Florida Derby. Obviously, the hidden scroll now with Javier Castellano on his back at 5-2 to two in the morning line. The jockey change from uh, Joel Rosario. Uh, hidden scroll being the beaten favorite in the Fountain of Youth Stakes after a poor ride by ex-jockey Joel Rosario. And new jockey Javier Castellano takes over, so that should be better uh, for him to hit the board. Obviously, hidden scroll is going to be on the lead. So with that being said, let me let you know how I think the race is going to pr- pr- uh, proceed as soon as they open up the gates. I do see the one hidden scroll and the seven maximum security going out for the lead. I see the um, I actually see the five ever fast uh, in the second tier this time with the six, eight, nine, ten, and eleven all in the second tier with the two, three, and the four uh, coming from the third tier in the back of the pack. That's how I see the race uh, starting out when the gates do open up. But I don't know if the one and the seven are going to provide enough upfront speed. 
uh, for long shots like Harvey Wallbanger at 15 to 1 and a medium uh, middle of the road favorite at Bourbon War at 7 to 2 to come from the back of the pack. I think you're only going to see one of those horses uh, be able to make the uh, make the front from the back of the pack because I really don't think there's going to be a ton of upfront speed to really tire out uh, everybody. I think Hidden Scroll also has the talent to stay on the front and uh, continue charging uh, no matter what uh, folks from the back are going to be doing. That's why I think that a horse like Everfast, which does like uh, getting in the back of the pack, that's why I think a horse like Everfast is actually going to be in the second tier for this kind of race. But I do think that Aaron picked the right winner. I think that Code of Honor with Suge McGahee as the trainer with John Velazquez on his back, I think that Code of Honor at 3-1 to one in the morning line should be the winner of Saturday's Express Bet Florida Derby. Uh, in the Fountain of Youth, he obviously beat Bourbon War and Vacoma, but there was a nice, there was a nice you know, pace to that race, and it allowed Code of Honor to really find his way home from middle of the pack, and I really thought that that was a really good run uh, from, the, from fifth place, basically, to win the race. Uh, Code of Honor did, and the Fountain of Youth stakes. Uh, so I, I really think that that serves a uh, purpose to him uh, being a, uh, you know, a, a a good solid favorite to win this race. So I really do like the nine, and obviously the one hidden scroll. My goodness sakes, we don't know what the new jockey is going to do now that Joel Rosario is off his back. But I think that hidden scroll definitely has a chance to not only hit the board but win this race, especially coming out of the one hole. He doesn't really have to do very much work. Uh, one thing I uh, really, you know, code of honor. I mean, yeah, I really see him just, you know, really kind of eating. He's going to be in a good position where he can eat up the early leaders, but I really don't see, I I, I really have to do like a coin flip on either Harvey Wallbanger or Bourbon War, and I really like Harvey Wallbanger uh, to be better than Bourbon War. I think Bourbon War really sort of disappointed me, even though he finished second last time out in the uh, Fountain of Youth Stakes. I think Bourbon War really disappointed me in that race, but he also had a good pace up front to where he could come from behind in that race. I think this is more of a race for Harvey Wallbanger, the 15-1 to shot, uh, the number three horse. So I like seeing the one, nine, seven, and three. Uh, going to be your top three, ho- uh, hop, uh, top three, our top four horses, the one, three, seven, nine. So I really think that uh, the seven maximum security should be able to hang on because boy, oh boy, can maximum security run at short distances? Six furlongs, six and a half, seven furlongs, no problem. Wins them by he won the seven and a half furl. He won the seven furlong race by 18 lengths. So no problem on the distance for maximum security. It's just a point now. Can he be bullied and handle the bullying? But I think he can. I like the one three seven nine is my pick. I like either the nine code of honor or the one hidden scroll to be your winner, gentlemen. Any more comments? Starting with Aaron. Yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna. I just gotta say hidden scroll. Um, I just believe this is gonna be a very very hot speed duel with him, as well as the horse that you just mentioned, maximum security. Like he went he went forty five for the half and seven furlongs. One oh nine is six. He, he only knows one way to go, and I, I believe that Luis Seas is going to do what he did last year with uh, Promises Fulfilled and Strike Power. They just took off and just just had a, just had gunned it early, and I don't think you can do that in a, in a mile in the eighth mile in the eighth race, and I don't think that Hidden Scroll is going to be able to hold on. I mean, I remember you gave your, your top ten rundown. I didn't hear Vacoma on there, and nope. Vacoma be Hidden Scroll. <laughs> Vacoma beat Hidden Scroll, and we don't even, we're not even talking about Vacoma like that. And it was barely though, but I don't think Hidden Scroll wanted even another eighth of a mile to go. So I, I just I just gotta fade them. I, I don't want them because I, I just can't just can't take this horse. They're talking about rating him, but then having him go and and that's just that's just if you don't know the horse's race style by now, even though he's only run two times. I just can't I can't put my money on him. So I'm just gonna fade ahead and scroll this this time out. He's an exceptional horse, but not this time. You make you make a good point on that, Aaron. You're you're not wrong. And just to answer your question, Bacoma is number twenty seven on the list with only ten points. Ooh, yeah. So yeah, so he's way back there. Uh Dana, any more comments from you? Well, this is the only thing uh, just an observation. You know, usually you see Todd Fletcher have one of the favorites in the Florida Derby, so it's kind of weird. He's got a horse in the race called Current. But current looks more like a turf horse, and uh, Castellanos, uh, you know, jumped off of him to ride Hidden Scroll. So I don't think uh, current is a, is is going to be much of a threat here. This is, it kind of just tells you that the uh, Pletcher has doesn't have as strong a hand as he normally does with the three year olds this year. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then one other point that I want to make about Harvey Wallbanger, that the three horses, that he is undefeated in two races with Brian Joseph Fernandez Jr. on his back. And before 
things sort of started falling apart with for Harvey Wallbanger, he was favorited in pretty much every race except his first. I mean, they, there was a lot of optimism around him, so I really think that he has a chance in this race. So we will definitely find out. All right, gentlemen, let's move on to our next race. But before we do that, I would like to remind everybody to log on to sportsradiodetroit.com SRD and check out the latest episodes of Tigers SRD because opening day was today as we record on Thursday, March 28th. It was opening day today in Major League Baseball. Well, the official opening day since they played two games in Japan last week between Oakland and Seattle. But the official Major League opening day was today around Major League Baseball. So Roger and Chris provide opening day news on not just the Tigers, but all the Major League Baseball teams as well, any injuries and any other news around the league. So that's Tigers SRD with Roger and Chris, only on Sports Radio Detroit.com SRD. And those boys will be on scene on Tuesday of next week when the Tigers make their opening uh, day. Uh, actually, I think the Tigers, yeah, are the Tigers... Uh, Dana, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here because I don't have the Tigers schedule up. Are they in town on Tuesday or is it next week, Friday? It's, uh, I think they're playing on Thursday. Well, they normally have a day off after their home opener just to, because you... Right, the rain out day. They don't want to lose the uh, gate. So I believe it's Thursday. Let me check here. I got the schedule up. You're right, it is Thursday. Uh, they, they basically, they'll play the Royals with that, uh, they'll, play, they'll open with the Royals, and then they have that off day on Friday and then resume the series on Saturday. So, yeah, so the Tigers will open up on Thursday, and you can check up uh, check out uh, Tigers SRD. will be live from Sinbad's on Thursday, April 4th, for the Tigers opening home opener, and you can check them out in Sinbad's from the early morning. I believe it's from 10 to 12 at Sinbad's Tigers SRD on Thursday, April 4th, for Tigers opening day. So with that being said, gentlemen, let's move on to Saturday's grade two, one mile and three sixteenths, $2.5 million UAE Derby from the marvelous Maidan race course in the United Arab Emirates. This will be race five on your card. Points awarded on the road to the Derby, 100 for the win, 40 for second. So again, that means the top two horses will get automatic bids. 20 for third and 10 for fourth. A field of 14 horses. Now post time, because it's in the United Arab Emirates, set for around 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time. So eggs, bacon, and horses on Saturday morning. 14 horses in this field, with the sixth horse being a filly, Divine Image, with the great Bill Buick on her back, the 2-1 to one morning line favorite. What do you have for that one there, Aaron? You know what? I like this filly. I really do. But guess what? It's not the six horse. Uh oh. It is the 13, 30 to 1, Swift Rose. That's what I'm going to take on top. And this 30 to 1 ran second by a neck to the horse that you just spoke of, Divine Image. 